What's up everyone, Bo from Buzzwords Med. I stumbled across this fantastic diagram on Reddit I thought I'd share it with you. So you have your leukemias and your lymphomas. On your leukemias, you have your myeloid and lymphoid lineages. So AML, what population gets AML? Remember, right, adults, 80% or more are found in adults, while ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, uh, is found in majority of children. You have acute myelogenous leukemia, which can be a manifestation of CML, chronic myelogenous leukemia, as well as just the general heterogeneous myelodysplastic syndrome. So although many MDS or myelodysplastic syndromes can be uh, indolent and can just be present for 10, 15, 20 years, some uh, acutely can uh, manifest and become AML. So something to know, MDS can become AML, also CML. So when you think CML, for example, you think of the leukemia with the BCR ABLE gene, you think of the Philadelphia chromosome, the tyrosine kinase and matinib, uh, the receptor blocker and all that good stuff. But if I think it's called a blast crisis, right? So when CML becomes AML, um, that's an acute change. On a board exam, you might see someone with a history of CML or symptoms of CML and um, acutely get worse. And you would think perhaps that they've manifested into an acute disease. So that's CML, that's AML and ALL. Remember, ALL just is the kiddo one uh, that we just mentioned. It's associated with a couple things. I think the important thing is kiddos with Down syndrome are more likely to have ALL. I think they're more likely to have both, but specifically we think about ALL because they're kiddos. Um, and then CLL is chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And this is the one that can also be indolent and uh, basically people can live with it for years. But what happens is that it slowly starts creating these cells. They're very fragile on microscopy. Uh, you could even see the smudge cells, which are just leukocytes without their cytoplasm and a fragile uh, shell. Uh, the main cause of death in people with CLL is actually infection because uh, they lose their ability to fight infections because their cells are not mature. So that's what you need to know about these bad boys. And their lymphoid uh, issues, hairy cell leukemia. So we think about that. Uh, you'll see the actual hairy cells, the dendrites off the uh, cell membrane, making it a hairy cell. There's also a marker for hairy cells. I think it's called the TRAP marker, T-R-A-P. So remember that as well. And then lymphoid lineage as well. You have multiple myeloma, which is classic. You think about crabs, hypercalcemia, renal issues, anemia, and bone pain. It's a manifestation of plasma cells. It's a plasma cell issue. You check an SPEP or a UPEP. You look for the electrophoresis bump um, of IgG or IgA. If it was IgM, you think about Waldenstrom's uh, macroglobulinemia. Uh, and those symptoms are more of a manifestation of viscosity, um, vision loss, headaches, things like that. So for lymphomas, you have non-Hodgkin's and Hodgkin's lymphomas. Uh, less to know about these, I think, for the Step 2 exam. For the Step 1 exam, I think it is still important to know which translocation. So I think that Thelma does a great job in that, 814, 1114, those kind of things. Um, other than that, I don't think you need to know much about non-Hodgkin's. Uh, T-cell lymphomas are even more rare. Uh, MF stands for mycosis fungoides. That one can manifest in the skin. Um, knowing more than that, I, I think the actual MF lesions are beyond the scope of both exams. Even dermatologists have a tough time figuring those out without a biopsy. So I think T-cell disorders are relatively low yield for the exams as well. And the Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, is lymphomas that don't encompass these. The thing to remember for this is the Reed Sternberg cells, I think on microscopy, uh, they often show those and uh, that will be the key identifier that this is Hodgkin's lymphoma. So make sure uh, you know what those look like. Let's go there now. I'm trying to figure out which CD cells. So Reed Sternberg cells. Uh, Beautiful picture here. You see these, you have to immediately think uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful for y'all. A cool little handout. I didn't make this handout, but I found it on Reddit and thought that it was valuable enough to share with y'all and uh, to go a little deeper into and just give you the high yields for each disease. If you found this helpful, make sure to like the video so others can find it. Subscribe so you don't miss any more. Check out our website, buzzwordsmed.com, where you can get uh, access to our podcast called the Med School Drinking Game and can get one step closer to easing your step exams. All right, guys, have a fantastic day and a great week. Bye bye now.